Here's a quick update on some species of broadleaf evergreen that I'm growing here. Starting with Carolina laurel. This one made it through the extreme cold with minimal foliage loss. And you can see it's putting on new growth here. It looks really good. So thumbs up for Carolina laurel. Prunus caroliniana. Sometimes you can find them on uh, fastgrowingtrees.com. Here's the Dahoon Holly. This is another one that was in the ground during extreme cold. Minimal foliage loss then, and a ton of new growth now. So this one's really good. I believe I got this from uh, shop.arborday.org, but you can find it in a few other places, sometimes mail order natives. And you just have to look around for Dahoon Holly. But so far, I'm pretty impressed by it. The leaf doesn't come off as holly right away, so it's pretty unique looking. By the way, here's an American holly, Ilexopaca. Looking really good, put on a lot of new growth. And I don't think I've shown this yet, but the Dragon Lady holly... Sorry, plane was going over. Dragon Lady holly has re-sprouted pretty much up and down the full length of the trunk. There was there were um, some branches that were lost due to extreme cold that trimmed those away, so it's obviously going to survive that and come back and put on new growth. So Dragon Lady Holly came back from the cold. This is an oak leaf holly, and uh, I think I may have gotten this from... I can't remember where I got it. Maybe Wilson Brothers. Anyway, it's putting on a lot of new growth. It's pretty thick and bushy now, but I have a single liter underneath there. You have to take my word for it. So eventually it will uh, have more of a tree form and less of a bush form. Oak leaf, Oakland holly. Here is the uh, southern wax myrtle, Myrica serifera. Came back after losing all of its foliage during the extreme cold, and it's already putting on vigorous new growth. And one thing I'm going to watch out for on this species is to uh, make sure there's a single leader and to trim some of that growth so it doesn't get too lanky because I've heard that the wood is pretty weak on it. So I want to uh, encourage thick growth at the trunk down here and keep a single leader to encourage thick growth, thick growth and uh, strong wood. And I'm gonna keep doing that and just selectively prune to achieve that. But uh, man, this Southern Wax Myrtle came back fast. Last year it was a star performer, so I'm still optimistic about it. Even though it lost its foliage during the cold, obviously a lot of the upper branches were still alive. This is the Christmas Jewel Holly, also a single trunk, and it's, it seems to be moderate to speed growth, which is fine, but it has really good structure. You can see how the branches come off it, good angles of a single leader, which maintains apical dominance all the way to the top. So I like the growth of this holly. I like the uh, small leaves of the Christmas Jewel holly. I uh, wanted one a couple years ago and didn't buy it and then went back to look for it at Lowe's and it was gone. So um, this one actually I ordered, I think, from WilsonBrothersGardens.com. But I'm glad I got this one. And here's the Portuguese laurel. I actually have another one of these on the other side. I'll show you later, but... These two came from ConiferKingdom.com. I don't know if they're still selling Portuguese laurel, but if they are, that appears to be the one place on the internet where you can find it. Prunus lusitanica, and it is supposed to be more cold hardy than English laurel, although these haven't been through a winter yet. This is the uh, Japanese holly steeds cultivar, Ilex crenata, and I got this from Lowe's or Home Depot, I think, Home Depot. And uh, it was multi-trunked when I got it, but you can see now I've trimmed it back to a single trunk. And that's the way it'll grow. Fairly tall and narrow growth, but I'm keeping it on a single trunk just to maintain that strength of the one trunk. Here is the Nellie Stevens holly. And it uh, mostly survived the extreme cold this winter and has put on a lot of new growth in the spring. So. Uh, there's no doubt that Nellie Stevens Holly can become very large and survive around here. 
because there are many good examples and you can find them anywhere, including Lowe's. And this is the Savannah Holly, which is a hybrid between the Alex Opaca American Holly and the Dahoon Holly Alex Cassine. This one came from WilsonBrothersGardens.com, I believe. It's putting on a lot of new growth, which maybe when the growing season is over, I'll trim a little bit just to make sure there's a single leader dominating the tree. But so far, so good on the Savannah Holly. This is the China Boy Holly. Also picked this up at Lowe's. And it's a cross between two um, cold hardy Asian hollies. The uh, Ilex rugosa and uh, Ilex cornuta. So um, high hopes for this one. We'll see how e easy it is to maintain vertical dominance on it. I hope it's not really wanting to grow like a bush. And I already showed in another video how good the uh, Magnolia Grandiflora Southern Magnolia is. This is the Edith Bogue cultivar. A lot of noise in the background there. Uh, Edith Bogue cultivar of Magnolia. Doing very well. Super cold hardy. This is probably the biggest surprise from last winter. This is the Trochodendron Aureliotes wheel tree. I thought it was dead, but it put out, put out new growth this spring, so amazing. Even the upper branches survived the extreme cold. Um, Trochodendron aureliotes, otherwise known as wheel tree, is going to fall under the category of almost impossible to obtain. I got lucky and found this one online. Um, maybe you could have luck with nurcar.com or uh, something like that. But this is going to be, uh, you're going to have to go on a quest to find this. And this is um, Coastal Dog Hobble, otherwise known, uh, the Latin name is Leucothui axillaris, a shade-loving broadleaf evergreen. It actually put on an interesting vertical offshoot here. Usually it's fairly low to the ground. So we'll see what it does. Now, I just put this in the ground in the spring. I believe this came from mailordernatives.com. And here's the uh, Sweet Bay Magnolia. This is, I'm not sure what the cultivar of this one is. It may just be straight species Sweet Bay Magnolia, but it survived the cold fairly well and put on a bunch of new growth. It, it still had leaves even after the extreme cold, but most of the leaves I see now are this year's leaves. Um, and I've got another one over here. This is the Silver Mist cultivar of Sweet Bay Magnolia that I just planted this spring based on the outstanding performance of the other one that I was just showing you. And these uh, Sweet Bay Magnolias can grow pretty tall, so I have them planted in a location that might be shady for other species, partial shade, but I know they're going to grow very tall and, and reach for the sun, so that's one good thing about Sweet Bay Magnolia. The other thing is that they have these uh, silvery undersides. Looks pretty cool in the wind. So um, along with the uh, Edith Bogue Magnolia Grandiflora Southern Magnolia, I would also recommend, if you're going into the broadleaf evergreen category, to uh, try the Sweet Bay Magnolia, specifically this Silver Mist cultivar, which is supposed to be more cold hardy than average. And this is the Elysium Floridanum, Florida anise. Just planted this spring. Um, forget where I got this. Maybe WilsonBrothersGardens.com, actually. And it's put on a ton of new growth. It's supposed to be pretty cold hardy. So we'll see what it does, but looking great. Here's a tiny Elysium Parviflorum Ocala anise that I just planted. This came from MailOrderNative.com, I believe. And I have a larger one I'll show you in a minute. These are super cold hardy. And this is a Japanese Pieris. I forget the name of this cultivar, but it was the most cold rated that I could find at Lowe's. And they sold out pretty quickly at the beginning of spring. But it's put on a lot of new growth so far. And my other Pieris actually died eventually. But it, I think when I saw that same cultivar at Lowe's, it was less cold hardy. So I'm hoping that where one Pieris failed, this one can succeed. 
This uh, rhododendron, I don't know what the cultivar is, obviously there are uh, hundreds of rhododendron cultivars, but uh, the top of it died during the extreme cold, but it's re-sprouted from all the side branches. So it's coming back. Uh, there's some old foliage underneath from last winter. It was in the ground during the extreme cold. I've got it planted on a sloping site with mostly morning, early, midday sun. Pretty shady in the afternoon. Here's the other Edith Pogue I just planted about a month ago and it's already putting on new growth. Edith Pogue, Southern Magnolia from WilsonBrothersGardens.com Looks like I may need to throw some water. It's been a pretty dry spring. Actually, still a little moist down there. So I have been carefully making sure that um, I've been watering some trees, especially the newly planted ones. This is a uh, castle wall in blue holly. Can't remember exactly where I got this from. Maybe the treecenter.com. They have a lot of hollies on there. But this one's planted in the area that's being converted to rock. Looking good so far. And this is the uh, Prague Viburnum. Um, hardy, cold hardy. Obviously, it survived the cold. Uh, the leaves, mm, most of them fell off. But it re-sprouted immediately in the spring, and I read that that's normal for this species, so uh, I'm very positive on viburnum, particularly the prog viburnum. Others, I'm not so sure, but prog viburnum, thumbs up. And this is a pyracantha coccinea is the Latin name. It's a pyracantha firethorn is the common name. I had two. Uh, one was lost. I lost the uh, teton cultivar. This is the Yukon Bell, and it seems to have not suffered as much from the cold. Obviously, uh, Paracantha grows in a variety of locations in its native range, so I'm guessing Yukon Bell was selected from a higher elevation stock that was slightly more cold hardy. I did have to trim away a lot of growth, but it's uh, regrowing. You can see there's the, the main leader that was lost there, but it's going to regrow and Hopefully I'll be able to re-establish a vertical leader that is going to bring some height to it, but for now I'm just happy to see it alive after the cold. And then here is my Eliagnus pungens, a uh, silverthorn is the common name. I did have two of these. Uh, one of them was the uh, Fruitlandia, I believe, that came from Wilson Brothers, and it uh, did die, but this is the regular one. Um, Eliagnus pungens that I purchased from Lowe's, and it came back even though it lost all of its leaves. You can see it's put on uh, a lot of new leaves now, so I'm just uh, letting this year be, be a uh, rebuilding year, and then maybe next year I will more aggressively prune and start to uh, maintain that one vertical leader. And here is that other um, Portuguese laurel that I mentioned. It's growing on the other side. It's already in the rock area. Looking pretty good so far. And this is the surviving portion of the Centennial Girl Holly that um, did pretty much get frozen back all the way to the ground. And uh, unlike some other species, like for example, it had a little um, English laurel that was also frozen back to the ground. I decided to get rid of that, but I decided to keep this one just because, you know, it's a holly in my holly collection. And uh, I just wanted it. So I'm letting this one regrow from the ground. And uh, we'll see what happens with it. It is interesting, though. I'm curious to see how uh, I'm going to establish a vertical leader on this. Surely one of these branches will go vertical. And last, but definitely not least, is the... Um, Ocala anise, Elysium parpiflorum. This tree uh, probably was the star performer of the extreme cold spell. I don't think a single leaf turned brown as a result of the cold, even though it was negative four, and this tree is native to northern Florida. So uh, Elysium parpiflorum. Can't say enough good about this one. It's putting on a lot of growth. I haven't yet figured out how to train a single vertical leader here, but I'm sure I will figure that out eventually. But for now, I'm just letting it grow wild uh, to see what it can do. Uh, I got this from WilsonBrothersGardens.com. 
I would recommend it if you're going to grow broadleaf evergreens in Middle Tennessee. You've got to try this species and uh, when people see it they're like what is that? Because no one's trying it and uh, a lot of websites will say that it's only rated to like zone 8 or something like that. But uh, my experience with negative 4 begs to differ. This thing can handle the cold. Uh, one last thing, I forgot to show you how the um, English laurel in the front of the house did after the severe pruning back to the ground. If you remember, the uh, most of the above ground branches were frozen and killed by the extreme cold. But you can see it's put on a ton of growth and obviously with a huge root system already established to support this new push of growth it can rapidly become a bush again. So. I am extremely satisfied with the decision to uh, leave the English laurel on the ground and just prune it back to stumps and let it re-sprout.